Hey, Bobby Trey. I made a new friend this week. I messed with her a little bit. Joanna, I'm sorry. She said, Pup, did you see an acrobatic action of Datadog? I started following your tweets and YouTube just a week ago. Oh, no, she's new. That's crazy. Your voodoo is working in an amazing way. Uh, keep going to a shaman. And I said, unfortunately, I don't know what you're talking about. Shamans or voodoo. All of my analysis is based on Elliott Wave and options activity. Uh, there's no way to tell what stock is going to be rotated into by reading tea leaves or deciphering coded messages and news articles. We have a free market. So I was messing with her a little bit. And uh, you know, she said it was a joke. And I was like, I'm just yanking your chain, Joanna. Uh, thanks for your kind words. I really appreciate it. But this was an interesting, uh, an interesting response she had. She said, "I got it. I promise not to compete with you on X or YouTube." And I really, you know, I think I I know what she's referring to. But I really don't have a problem with you know people competing with me on X or YouTube or any of that. Uh, that's not really ever the problem that I've had, ever, to be honest. The problem, if I've ever voiced it, is that I, I'm smoking the competition. There is no competition. What are you talking about? Who's competing with me? You know what I mean? But if you look at my numbers, you know, I'm a really thankful person. 25,600 you know, followers. I know there's some stuff in the past I could have not done to help with my engagement. I thought some of that was important. But anyway, you know, YouTube, 4,770 subs, right? Uh, Twitter, you know, they don't really go up, to be honest. It normally just stays flat or, or goes down. And I think that's very interesting because uh, I really have, have not... Um, done too bad for for a long time. I mean, even this week, uh, three days after this video was posted, we had Tesla up twenty four and a half percent, Archer Aviation up twenty three percent, and you know it can really just go into a a long long tangent going into the the past uh, predictions, but and and why I think I've smoked the competition, so to speak, and, you know, I should be one of the biggest accounts on FinTwit, even if I don't pay for that, that X blue check, and that's because I give the best analysis in the world, and what I never really thought, you know, a long time ago, when I, I drew this up uh, for the, the NASDAQ, was that we would go all the way the length of this rally placed at this low. We would really go reach that all the way up towards 500 for QQQ. And I still, you know, never really have the follower increase or the subscriber increase. Because here's, here's what I'm talking about. Whenever the stock market does this, or whenever the stock market does this, the people who are bearish, even during a substantial amount of the recovery when it gets wiped out, you know, their accounts double, they triple, they quadruple. You know, and, and not even close to it just being the NASDAQ. I've almost gone piece by piece every stock within the NASDAQ, even as they've taken their turn, you know, gone all the way up to here. And, and now we're at a point very much similar with the crypto market where we're almost getting ready towards, you know, looking at turning around a couple of weeks from now, you know. So it's kind of like, man. We, we really went this whole cycle and all the perfect predictions I made, uh, the um, incredible amount of times that uh, each of these corrections, I predicted the ABC's ending, I, I predicted the best winners uh, coming out of those stocks. Now we're at a point where it's time to you know, start, start looking the other way, maybe a few weeks from now, going in towards the third quarter quad witching and looking at stocks. Uh, like Apple, uh, for signals of when corrections can end. And Amazon, which I went over uh, recently, just a, a, another one very recently, Apple, like I said, 
uh, predicting a, a massive outperformance. NVIDIA so many times that I don't even need to go over it. And, you know, now what would be a, a good example of why, you know, picking super tops, at least for some uh, tech sectors, might not be a good idea. Advanced micro devices uh, giving a good bit of evidence this week, zooming in from this low. Uh, we're getting close to breaking this red wave one high, a small wave one, and a wave two. Um, so, you know, if I'm expecting that AMD is going to be heading towards the 230s, the 240s, and, you know, that may not be the only example with, with Apple uh, that I just went over, even when it reaches this wave three minimum target, uh, there would be a, a wave four correction and a wave five higher. So that would be some correlating evidence that the correction wouldn't be a super mega top. If we can get back to Apple uh, right now, we'll see if that is going to work uh, for bar chart. So it looks like we're not going to be looking at uh, Apple again, at least on this tab. AMD, you know, I predicted that this, this was a, um, a wave two ending, another wave two ending, now a wave four ending. And we're looking for um, the 230s, the 240s for that wave five you know, target range, at least to break this wave three high. So it's hard to believe that the stock market would top during that period of time. Adobe, uh, very perfect right here. Uh, 406. So I do have uh, dyslexia. Obviously, when I posted this, um, Adobe was already at 460. The line you can clearly see is 460. I'm going to say 406.98. But we can see that Adobe's um, gone one, two, three, four, five, wave one, wave A, and ABC, wave two, wave B. This would be another good example of, you know, maybe at least for a, a pretty select sector of the stock market, the software sector, uh, wave one, wave A, ABC, wave two, wave B, the length of wave one placed with the wave two low being hit for wave three, uh, Microsoft, I did the entire rally from the super cycle low, IGV, the entire Oracle, you know, all of them, really. And so going piece by piece, this is my Microsoft chart, you know, perfect, absolutely perfect. And, and even this whole rally, perfect all the way up. IGV, again, at the, at the perfect bottom, we've had a stock split now, so my, my chart's not even going to be there. But it's equal legs target is the length of wave one, places the wave too low. So maybe software playing catch up is a theme. IGV possibly that equal X target is 101. Z scaler, we're getting a little farther from the NASDAQ, but this has been turning up. Just another example of looking at these option screens. One, two, three, four, five, finding the next big winner. ABC wave two at the 78.6% retracement. One, two, three, four, five, wave one. ABC wave two at the 50 to 61.8 percent retracement. The length of wave one places the wave too low. I believe Z scaler is getting off to a wave three uh, to 329. Palantir, another software name that's um, maybe giving evidence that this sector isn't as much of a blow off top as the rest of tech. One, two, three, four, five. The length of wave one places the wave too low was the wave three target that's 34. look at this rsi one two wave three highest reading shallow wave four wave five higher the length of wave one places the wave too low is 34 that's the minimum target before shallow wave four that may retest the wave one high if it does it gives a minimum target for wave five the length of wave one places the wave four low is 41. Uh, that's found because wave five and Elliott wave theory is either the length of wave one or the length of wave three places wave four low and wave one is almost always smaller than wave three. So that's a little bit of a shorthand that suggests, you know, Palantir could be at 34 and then uh, 40, even the low 40s one day. So there's a bit of a software theme. Tesla, we reached the target. So there's a lot of levels into the Tesla analysis. And, you know, this is kind of where maybe a bigger theme uh, would be getting at that, you know, we're getting into 
a time in the market where my skills and uh, what I do very well, very niche, it's going to be, you know, pretty important. And it's not going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be very, there's going to be nuance to it. I uh, did figure out the CRSH. Uh, T-S-L-Y combination, just one extra ticker uh, needs to be added so it's delta neutral and the, the capped nature of uh, T-S-L-Y is gotten rid of. You know, I figured that out and now, you know, we're at a point where that's the type of thing um, I should really probably, you know, think about before, you know, I just start giving stuff away like this. I've already given away uh, all of my methods and uh, various things like that, but even just within the technical analysis landscape, you know, the problem, Joanna, is not competition. It's, it's definitely not um, that I don't want people competing with me or anything beyond or anything uh, that's part of that nature. You know, I, I want people to compete with me. The problem is that, you know, I'm really winning the competition. And so I, I really appreciate you're a new, you know, follower, you're a new subscriber. Um, and, and that's the type of stuff that, you know, I expect to see uh, when the volatility index has been crashing for two years. But, you know, I think maybe more of a lesson to this video, I would suggest, is that when it's important to understand that there is a skew inherently uh, in technical analysis and just in human nature, when the volatility index starts spiking and... And that, we're, we're, the scandal of the market going down, the disaster, all of that, it gets really sexy. So even people who don't know what they're doing, they can just be perma bears during a period like this, you know, even the entire correction, you know, a period like this, even the entire, entire correction. Their accounts will triple, quadruple, quintuple. A person like me can actually make a living from the stock market, so I don't need to sell anything. I don't need to advertise. I don't need to promote and I can call the entire stock market perfectly and tell you guys, you know, kind of kind of what I'm doing and have my followers and subscribers plateau and even stay the same. And I've been told that, you know, the reason for some of that is that I've been a little too, you know, truthful in, at some times with my analysis for, you know, stocks like uh, the cryptocurrencies, for example, where... Uh, what 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 are some of these bull theses for altcoins like uh, Ripple, and what are the the real the real thoughts about the Bitcoin mining sector? In a lot of ways, we're talking about things that are very futuristic, and they're very even just reading uh, the theses. It it doesn't it's not like regular stock analysis, uh, where you know, some of the, the stuff that I talk about that I've been told, hey, you know, this is keeping, you know, your subscribers and your followers down. Well, the, the truth is that's kind of how I know, and or maybe I don't know, I just kind of think, in my opinion, that, you know, Ripple and uh, Dogecoin and, and Bitcoin and MicroStrategy and Bit Digital and, and Marathon Patent Group, you know, they're going to see, you know, this, this dip, this correction, uh, be bought. What what do people actually think about Dogecoin? You know why why is this goofy coin possibly keep going up three hundred percent? You know four hundred percent. Oh, if it, if it ever went up and you know rallied up towards you know the eighty cent ninety cent range, uh, what would the fundamental explanation for that be? Uh, the problem is that you know I've kind of gone and uh, addressed a lot of these uh, topics and even. You know, the methods and the, the research to get here, you know, it, it's not, it's not uh, conventional. Even this, this is about as conventional as we can accept, Joanna. So I'm going to try to get uh, back to this. I'm going to try to to stick to, the, to this. But, you know, I don't have a problem with competition, uh, Joanna. I, I have a problem with the fact that um, I've called this entire rally perfectly. And now we need to look for evidence that we could possibly be extending. Um, what, what's Tesla going to be doing? What's Apple going to be doing? What's AMD going to be doing? What are the, the big sectors within tech uh, going to be outperforming? Uh, we have a lot of questions to answer. And, um, you know, I wish, you know, people saw in the competitive landscape, 
I don't have a problem with competition, uh, but I think it's time to start crowning the winner, I guess, before it's time for me to start uh, predicting tops and things of that nature.